know God is good. And he knows every situation that is in this room right now. He knows the very thoughts that you're thinking. He knows the word that he needs to say so that it will accomplish a mass of things in each and every one of our lives. He's just that good of a guy. You know, it, it amazes me how much God loves us. The fact that he would send his only begotten son, only begotten son, so that whosoever believes, whoever would put their, their belief in him, would not perish, would not have to experience hell, but would give each and every one that believed in him eternal life so that we could be with him in heaven. Man, what a good father we have. Don't we have a good father? Can we just give the Lord to somebody say it? Well, he didn't have to, but he did it because he loved us. We're going to stand for the reading of God's word. And guys, I believe we're going to go to Acts chapter 3. Um, starting in verse 11. Look at somebody and smile. <laughs> yeah, look at them. It appears, it appears, unless God was to come back like right now, that he's going to give us an opportunity to hear his word again. Amen. Isn't that special? Yeah. But who knows? We might not. That's right. It could happen right now. Right. Are you ready? Yeah. If Jesus was to come back, would you be ready? We're going to share with you what the Lord's laid on our heart and as he lays it on our heart. Verse 11, Acts chapter 3. Now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. And when Peter saw he, it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate. When he was determined to let him go, but you denied the Holy One and the just, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. And in his name, through his name, has made this man strong. Whom you see and know, yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the prophet of all, or by the mouth of all his prophets, that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Listen to verse 19. Repent, therefore. You know, repentance is a good thing. To have the ability to, to say I'm sorry and to turn from our sins is a gift from God. To have the blood of Jesus 
to be able to cover our sins when we repent. Boy, that's a great gift. Repent, therefore, and be converted, changed, a new creation, that your sins may be blotted out, erased, wiped away, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And that he may send Jesus Christ, who you pre who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world Brothers and sisters, this thing has been going before there was ever a world. Nothing catches God off guard. I want to say this from the bottom of my heart as I feel the Holy Spirit touching me. Your life has been measured out. Everything about it. Before you were in your mother's womb, he measured. We serve a measuring God. A God that knows our going in and a God that knows our coming out. He knows everything that's been measured. Whatever you're facing, he's walking with you. He's walking with you. You know, if you got a loved one, why don't you grab their hand right now? Put your hand on someone. Father in heaven, to the laying on of hands, by the word of God, by the spirit of God, I thank you for what you're going to do in this service. Lord, we look up because your Bible says, to look up for our redemption draweth nigh. Lord, the world would love for us to look down and be beaten down and make us think that we caused a, something that would put you so far away from us that we wouldn't be able to get to you, but that is not what your word says. You are near to us. Your hand is stretched out walking with us each and every day. Lord, thank you for the many blessings that you've given us. We pray that you would bless this congregation as you always do. It's in the name of Jesus Christ. The whole church said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. tell you, you are a beautiful summer crowd. We know that it's easy with long days and good weather to not want to put coming to church as, as a priority, but I just want to commend you say that God is looking down He sees you sitting in this sanctuary. He knows the commitment that you have to him. And he loves you. <laughs> and we love you. Thank you for coming. As you can see, I'm kind of a little, a little hesitant here on where we're going. It's because, really, I, I want God to speak. I want life to be changed. I want you to hopefully fall so, so in love with Jesus. I want it to be a deep love. As the deep calls the deep. So my soul panteth after me. I didn't want to come and just bring you a 20 minute sermon of fluff to get you out of here. Because that don't change anybody. Go through the program and sing the songs and you walk out and feel like you hadn't heard from God. But I believe God's got a message. 
This story that I read to you when Peter and John were at that temple gate and he, they seen that lame man at the gate in chapter 3. It's amazing that it was at the hour of prayer. And a lot of things, you know, have happened that I can recall at the hour of prayer. This man received a miracle at the hour of prayer. As he was waiting, hoping that somebody would be able to heal him. Peter and John walk into the are walking into the temple after after Pentecost had just been poured out and the Holy Ghost had just been poured out on the 120. They were a part of that. God's presence and his spirit had been released in a new way and now people were acting differently. They were sharing in all things in Acts chapter 2. They were helping one another. They, had, they were eating with one another. God was sending them the promise that he, had, uh, that he had promised to them. And Peter had preached out of the book of Joel. He said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet. Yes. I am going to pour out my spirit. Among all flesh in these last days. Yeah. And Peter and John, after being filled with the Holy Spirit now, after being filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter and John walk up on this lame man, and he tells them, he, they, he's begging them for money, and he, they look at him and say, Silver gold have I none, but in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is the most important person in our life. What he did on the cross is the most important gift that we possess, yes. the gift of eternal life. As Christians, we are to be crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. Everything about us when we get saved and we're filled with the Holy Ghost, everything about us should change and start turning direction. We should have received repentance and we should have repented and grace and mercy we should have received. And now our trajectory is heaven and our focus is the cross and the most important person we'll ever love fall in love with is the man Jesus Christ yeah. and what he has did for us. Can yeah. somebody yeah. say it? Yeah. You see, when they heard this, fear and so great fear came upon, upon all those who heard this. They were feeling something different like they had never felt before. They were no longer doing church as usual and the religious establishment had lost their, uh, their authority because now Jesus had died, he had rose again, he had split the veil, and now the Holy Ghost was being poured out on all flesh. Yeah, yeah. And brothers and sisters, this is something that was promised by the prophets of old. Yeah, yeah. What this lame man was experiencing was just that, that the book of Mark was saying after Jesus had rose again and he gave the great commission when he said, in his name, yes. the lame will walk again. Yeah. Meaning in his name, people will be healed again. People can receive their sight. God, God was doing a new thing. Life was not going to be the same. And he was going to do a supernatural thing. I want to tell you that God still wants his spirit to flow through his believers. Amen. I believe God is looking for some Peters and some Johns that will, might not have the money, but in the name of, they have the name of Jesus Christ that they can speak. 
and make mountains in their lives make them move. Amen? Amen. Fear came upon the church. We read these things because it's amazing how Peter and John knew and didn't, didn't gloat in, in the power that God had poured on them, but yet they stayed humble, yes. stayed committed to their to the servant Jesus, to the one that they were serving. He tells them, he says, but you've denied this in our text. You've denied this kind of preaching. You killed the one that uh, I'm preaching to you about. You didn't receive it, but God is doing a, a new thing. And he says, in his name, I love this. In his name, through his through faith in his name, has made this man strong. How did he become strong? How did this lame man jump to his feet and the Bible says him start praising God and the people were filled with wonder and amazement? What was it that made this man, after being at that temple gate where he could not move for years, now he was all of a sudden walking and talking about this man, Jesus, like he had never experienced Jesus before. I, Luke tells us in the book of Acts. It was in his name. And then he goes on and he adds something, an element to us. He says, and through faith in his name. Has made this man strong. I don't know what kind of miracle you need today. I don't know what kind of situation you're facing. <coughs> but I come to tell you that it will be in his name. That's right. And faith through his name. Yes. That, that it will take place in your life. Yes. That lost loved one. That child that's running. That, that companion that husband or wife that may, be, that, that may be drifting away, brothers and sisters, let me just tell you. It will be through his name. Yes, Faith in his name. Yes. You won't be able to fix it. You won't be able to change it. You can't put your hands to it and create a situation that will make, make it happen. The only thing you, you can do and I can do is to pray yes. and believe and put faith to his name, our faith to his name. And when our faith touches his name, brothers and sisters, supernatural things start happening yes. in the spiritual realm. Amen. It's what moves heaven. It's our faith. It's his name. It's spirit-filled, Holy Ghost people. That have been empowered with power from on high. Yeah. To sit there. And to sit there sometimes in silence. And wait on the Holy Spirit to do a supernatural work. To tarry. To believe when there's no one else that will believe with you. Yeah. To stay when everybody else is telling you to leave. It's faith, that thing that you cannot see, that thing that you can, but you hope for it. It's the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things that you cannot see in your spirit, in your heart, in your soul. You believe it, and in his name you speak it Amen. through prayer. Amen. And in that hour of prayer, I personally believe that that is the most precious thing. Time with God is when we pray. Yeah. When we get on our knees or when we are with intercessors or when the church says, let's pray. I don't know of anything else that moves God according to scripture than when we call on his name. Amen. And we pray and we believe. Right. You see, he goes on and he says, repent and be converted. Down in verse 19. He tells me, he says, you did this in ignorance, but that's okay because God knew everything. Mm -hmm. 
Now, how many of us have done things in ignorance? <laughs> and how many of us are thankful that God Amen. knew everything? Amen. He says, you did it in ignorance, but that's okay because God knew everything and he had to fulfill what the prophets were saying and he had to bring about his, he had to bring about the Christ. The Christ. And he said that we had to repent so that we could be converted. Sometimes I wonder if we still believe that God has the power to convert. Sometimes I wonder if we are still open, open up to the conversion that God wants to do in our lives. That's what he was telling these people. Repent and be converted. You can't stay the same when you receive Jesus Christ. You, we, we can't we cannot not want the Holy Spirit because when we get saved, he, he puts the Holy Spirit in us. We cannot say the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for somebody else and not for me because you've been birthed by the Spirit in water to desire a conversion, a, a, a walk with Jesus that empowers you to be a witness and a disciple, a disciplined believer of Jesus Christ. Yeah. We just can't receive Jesus and say, this conversion stuff's not, it, it's just not for me. That spirit, mm, it's just not for me. Brothers and sisters, no. You got, God wants to use his spirit to convert us. Yes. That's why when we are forgiven of our sins and our sins are blotted out, He's telling them after the day of Pentecost, your sins have been wiped away, but there's, a, there's more to this story than just your sins being blotted out. Right. Times of refreshing are coming. Yes. Right. Yes. Glory be to God. This journey that we're struggling on, times of refreshing are coming. How are they coming? They come by the Spirit of God. Yes. Times of refreshing. You're tired and you're weary. God wants me to tell you there's times of refreshing in his spirit. You can sit in his presence according to this scripture right here. That, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. When we get into his presence, times of refreshing, they come. And the spirit of God refreshes us. And he blows on us. That word right there literally means a cool blowing. Yeah. If you were to study times of refreshing, you were a cool blowing as though you're just sitting there. You're burning up and all of a sudden you get in front. You, you've been working outside all day and it's like you're getting in your car and turning on the air and a cool blowing hits you. That's what the Spirit does for us. He breathes on us. He blows on us. And He gives us a refreshing. The Spirit moves. His glory is poured out. I believe Personally, I, will, I hope somebody else would believe with me that God, before he comes back, is still, still stretching out his hand. You know, brothers and sisters, God's hand is stretched out to hurt, to help those who are lost and to help those who Who are hungry for the word. I believe that God is still stretching out his hand. In these last days. Because we are living in the last days. I don't know how long it's been since I said that. 
But don't put you, don't, 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 don't not think that God is coming. Don't, don't put your guard down, I guess is what I'm saying. Don't think you got, we've got plenty of time. Because I believe that God is coming. Jesus Christ is coming back. There's nothing else that we need to put in front of us serving God, I guess is what I'm saying. Don't put, you, don't, don't put your guard down and think you got time to run over here and do this because the Bible says we don't have that kind of time. He's pouring out his spirit and his hand is stretched out. Man, these times of refreshing. I was in the book of Isaiah. Let's go there for just a moment. I was reading in the book of Isaiah, I believe it was, in chapter 28. You know, I, I told you that speaking in tongues was in the Old Testament. I told you that it's a gift that God gives us. It's one of the gifts. Right here we read it again. For precept must be upon precept. What that means is commandment among, uh, upon commandment is how we build our life. That's why it's so important to... That's why it's so important to... Build our lives off the word of God. Yes. Young people. Everybody. Right. Nothing more beneficial that I can think of than to start building your life off the word of God. Yes. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Yes. Line upon line. Yes. How we're going to do it? Here a little. There a little. With simmering lips and another tongue. He will speak to his people. <laughs> to whom he said, you want some rest? Y'all want some rest from this old crazy world? Y'all want to just be, y'all want some peace? To whom he said, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. He said, this is how you're going to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. And then it closes. It's sandwiched in there with the word of God. But the word of the Lord was with them. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little, there a little. Yes. He guarded this precious gift with his word. Yes. And he said, this is the rest that I give to the weary. Yes. This, is, this is a refreshing that Isaiah was talking about. I had so many people that, were, that had asked about Tongues and speaking in tongues. Brothers and sisters, Zephaniah called it a pure language. Yeah. Zephaniah in the Old Testament said, I will give you a pure language, a pure tongue, a language that whenever we need to get away and we need to have a time of refreshing, you can just sit there and you can Allow God to breathe on you. You know, in Isaiah chapter 5, I run across something that I thought was pretty neat. Because it just kind of all ties into Acts chapter 3 with some of the stuff that Peter was saying to these Jews now. You see, Jesus was given so that those that were lost could be saved. Not so that we could experience an American dream. Or not so that we could have great careers that we think. Uh, we should have. He wasn't given for that, brothers and sisters. He was given. His body was given. So people like us who were dead in their trespasses and sins mm -hmm. can come to Jesus. 
And we read here, I love this right here. Listen to this. It says, therefore the anger of the Lord is aroused against his people. He has stretched out his hand against them and stricken them. The hills tremble. Their caucuses were as refused in the midst of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away. Did y'all hear that? Even though his anger was aroused against his people, even though he had stricken them, even though the hills were trembling because of Jesus and the Lord. For all this, his anger is not turned away. I love this but right here. But his hand is stretched out. Even though he looks down and he sees craziness. People say, I just don't know how God can, can just let this old world go the way it's going. I'm telling you what, I can give you. I, he's even got his hand stretched out to us. Not only is he letting it happen, the Bible says his hand is stretched out still to those who will believe what he did on the cross is forgiven. Yeah. He will lift up a banner to the nations from afar. Yeah. I love this right here. I believe he's doing this next part right here. <laughs> I believe he's whistling. I do. I, I can't see it, Brother Bill, but according to Isaiah... I believe in these last days because of his spirit. I believe his spirit is. Don't worry. Be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. He will lift up his banner to the nations and will whistle to them from the end of the earth. He is out here. We can't hear it. We have to hear it spiritually. Our, our ears can't hear it. These ears that are on our head can't hear it. But I believe he's... I believe he's out there whistling to the end of the earth, calling on those people so that they can run with him with speed and come to him swiftly. Everybody that has shared the gospel. He's still calling. His work is not done. The church's purpose is still to win the lost. Yeah. It's still to lay the hands on people that are sick so that they can be healed. It's still to be able to cast out addictions and demons and all those things that come against people. And so that they can be free. Yes, his hand is still stretched out. Yeah. And yes, he's still whistling to the ends of the earth. Yes, his spirit is still moving. No one will slumber nor sleep, nor will the veil on their loins be loosened, nor will the strap of their sandals be broken. He's saying that there's a place, a safe place, when you run to Jesus. When you hear the call, when you hear him whistling for you, when you get away and you allow him to breathe and blow on you that cool, fresh air yes. from the Holy Spirit. As though Adam and Eve was in the Garden of Gethsemane and they were walking in the presence of God and God was in their presence. Brothers and sisters, that is what the gift of the Holy Spirit allows us to do. It allows us to be refreshed with a cool touch from the breath of God. I don't understand it. I just know when I feel it. I wish I could catch it and grab it and put it in a, put it in a bottle and give it to you, but I can't. You just know when you feel it, amen? 
You just know when he breathes on you. You just know when you hear the whistle and he tells you, go do this and go do that. Yeah. You just know whenever, if it wouldn't have been for the hand of God that was stretched out, his anger should have, you should have, he should have just like, Put you as a pillar of salt because of what you did. But his grace and his mercy, his love, his outstretched hand toward us. Yeah. Lifted us up yeah. one more time when yeah. we repented. Yeah. How do we do this? I think Zachariah. I want to go to Zachariah real quick. Real fast. I think we learned something from Zachariah. Oh, Lord, I just wonder if there's anybody here that says, Pastor, I just need a time of refreshing. I just need his hand to touch me or me grab his hand. I just need to be able to hear his whistling. There's so much noise in my life. I can't even hear when he's whistling. He says in Zechariah. Chapter 4 verses 6 through 9. As Zechariah is seeing the measuring. The vision. I'm sorry, the vision of a lampstand and an olive tree. Go to verse 6, he says, So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. He was facing a great mountain. Listen to what he said. Who are you, O great mountain? But Zerubbabel, you shall become. Before Zerubbabel, you shall become plain. And he shall bring forth a capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Grace, grace. To it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands all, shall also finish it. Then you will know. This right here is one of those scriptures as we go, as we're trying to build a, a new church so that we can let God's outstretched hand reach more people. And we can do ministry at a level above what we're able to do it now so that more people can come to a knowledge and in a relationship to repentance be converted in Jesus Christ I'm reminded with this scripture right here that it's okay because it may look like a mountain brothers and sisters but I'm telling you one step at a time one faith step at a time precept upon precept Line upon line, God is doing a supernatural work for his own glory. Yes. And so they will all know. That's why he stretches us. So that we'll all believe and so that we'll all know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of small things? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. They are the eyes of the Lord, which scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. Y'all hear that? To and fro. His eyes. Chapter 2. Start off by saying your life was measured. Yeah. You're going in, you're coming out. Your life was measured. Then I raised my eyes and looked. You ever heard me say when we were praying, don't look down. 
Look up. I don't know why it's so natural for us to look down. I do it sometimes. I'll be over here stressed out, fixing to come up here and deliver God's word. I just look down. Then I'm reminded, just look up, raise those eyes up. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell us. Does it tell us? Tells us. They went Robinson County. <laughs> Nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell us to look down. I can find places like this where it says, raise those eyes and look up. That's where our help's at. Then I raise my eyes and look. And behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. So I said, where are you going? He said to me, I'm going to measure Jerusalem. To see what is its width and what is its length. And there was the angel who talked with me going out. And another angel was coming out to meet him. I don't believe in angels. I don't care what these folks say. Uh, I believe in angels. Um, I do. I believe we entertain them unaware according to Hebrews. I believe that when I get to heaven that God's going to show me things that he did for me that I'm not aware of right now in the flesh. That if it wouldn't have been for an angel that he sent, I probably shouldn't be walking and talking today. I believe there's going to be a list of them that I'm going to see when I'm in you know, when you get that spiritual body and you're able to look at Jesus, and he's going to say, this is how much I loved you. We don't, I don't even know if we comprehend how much Jesus. I know we don't comprehend how much Jesus loves us. Hallelujah. He loves us so much. Who said to him, run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls. That's what I see, river of life right there. There ain't going to be no walls. Discrimination, racism, we don't put up with that kind of crap. Where your background is. Oh, I, I, I didn't, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. We're not trying to be a bunch of rich people. And we're not trying to be a bunch of poor people. We're just trying to be like Jesus. Can I get an amen? amen? We don't care if you're Republican, Democrat. We don't care if you've ever voted. We don't care if you vote. It don't matter to us. We want you to hear the word of the Lord and to experience Jesus. There's nothing that this church right here, no wall this church is building that is trying to separate God's presence from a people who want to get in his glory. Yeah. That's the kind of church this is going to be. Yeah. Who said to him, run, speak to this young man, say, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls. You can't, you can't build a church and, and, and put up walls. You can't hate your neighbor. And think it's okay with God? Brothers and sisters, you can't do that. If we can't sin willfully, put up walls that are built in sin, and act like, oh man, I'm a child of God. He's just going to let me do anything I want to do. No, that's building walls. We got to lay it down. We got to constantly be open to God coming in and cleaning us constantly with His presence and with His Spirit. With the blood of Jesus Christ being applied to us. Grace, grace to that mountain, he said. Grace, grace to him. Without walls to cause the multitude of men and livestock in it. Now, brothers and sisters, I believe if Jesus doesn't come back, this church, our church family, is going to be a great move in the last days. I really do. I believe he's raising us up. To reach more people in our community. He's raising you up. I believe that the prayers of our intercessors. Yes. I believe the prayers that you pray of our people. Are going to meet. Meet. And we're going to see a great revival. In our church. For I says the Lord. Will be a wall of fire all around her. And I will be the glory. You know, in the Bible, there's a lot of woes. A woe is a warning. I want to say something to this group of people right here. Because I love you and God loves you. I want to warn you. I want to give you a woe. We don't hear preachers say this very much. I want to warn you 
I want to give you a word. And I'm going to say this as calmly as I can. And the woe is this. Church of the living God cannot afford to trade in who we were called to be and trade in the glory of God for anything this world wants to offer. That's the world. For we all through that book, the people of God cherish. They cherish the Spirit of God, the glory of God. When they were moving the Ark, Ark of the Covenant around, I'm telling you, it was the most important thing, the glory of God, which is what the Ark of the Covenant symbolized, the presence of God. Where is the presence of God? Where is the glory of God that, it, that is inside of us? <laughs> That's inside of us. I'm not talking about a church service, brothers and sisters. I'm talking about what he has filled us with, what he has imparted in us, the spirit, when he saved us. Where is the glory of God yeah. in our lives? It's inside of you and me. In his name and through faith in his name, that glory will be revealed.